Cup, Butch Cup in der Sonne. So, Morgan, regarding at the songs of your album, or at the title of the songs, means suck and choke and do you think I'm a whore? You might think this album is about th sex, mm -hmm. but I think but, it's not. Oh, definitely. I think that a lot of times um, the titles are misinterpreted. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times the context that they're in, like, say, for instance, choke is not... You know, people with sick minds might think that it's something different, but I mean, it's like, it's like, you know, hope you choke like mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, I think a lot of times people just kind of uh, misinterpret the titles of the songs, and because there's, you know, a lot of um, in the media, you know, there is a lot of, you know, s sexual, you know, innuendos and whatnot. You know, a lot of people use sex to sell their um, products and stuff. I think a lot of people are just over bombarded with it and they think that everything is like that now, um, which definitely it's not. You know, we have a little bit more substance to us and you know, we try to focus on um, more issues that are um, a little so more serious. It's, it's more about oppression and you oh, mistreated yeah, by people. Mm -hmm. is that it's, right? it's pretty much everyday experiences. Um, nothing on the album is really too out of the ordinary. You know, we've led pretty much, um, you know, normal lives, you know, and we're just kind of focusing on, you know, such aspects of, of our life as, you know, our environment, society, um, and, you know, and the different people that we come in contact with every day, so. So you really think you're really um, sucked off by the people who are around you? Um, no, not necessarily. We're not really angry people. I just think that, you know, if something um, does go wrong or, you know, if there's something that we see anger you know, yeah that we can reflect on mm -hmm. and definitely we're going to reflect on it so um oh, hey. do you think life is hard um oh definitely yeah it definitely is um i don't think anyone has you know a life that's um you know perfectly coasting um i don't know you just have to you know sit back and kind of take things in stride definitely so how do you um uh, the people around you in your school how were you treated by them when they noticed, okay, they, they got success? Was it like, they reacted very normal to um, you? And I you think, were... I don't know, all of our friends kind of reacted differently. Yeah, mine, mine were really, really proud of me. And it's because most of them have been to our shows since we began. And they were just, they would, you know, just congratulate me every time. They're so like, they're like I'm so proud of you, you know. Yeah. And they'll follow us too. They'll like see the the show, like if we're on a television show or something, like they'll watch it or buy an magazine with us in it. And so they're very supportive and they've been very sweet. And there, very the, good there's it. also been, you know, a bit of jealousy, but I think that comes with every band. Right. You know that, um, you know, you're the, you were the hometown kind of band that everyone, you know, all your friends would come out to see. And then once they see that you're successful and that other people like you, they're kind of like, well. You, know, you, you don't belong to us anymore, you know, and they just there's a little bit of jealousy. But I mean that I'm sure that if you asked any band, most that people know that you had to work really hard. Oh yeah, for your definitely. So. They all know it. They've all been to the shows. Mm. <laughs> okay, coming up now is your um, video for Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Remember anything of the shooting? Oh yeah, it was um, it was a fun day. We flew uh, from New Orleans to Toronto. We recorded it in one day, and it was a very hot day, and we were melting. Mm -hmm. um, but it turned out beautifully, and we're pretty happy. So here it is. Here it is. Und da die Ladies ja doch relativ jung sind, interessiert mich schon, wie ihre Eltern in zu der ganzen Geschichte stehen, dass sie eine Band sind und jetzt schon draußen in Europa unterwegs. So ladies. Um, seeing the point that you are I mean pretty young mm -hmm. and you got your parents what do they think of it are they're they cool supporting you mm, yeah. definitely they're very supportive yeah uh, like my if my dad had time he would you know fly over here and he would come to the show himself because uh, uh, my parents are extremely supportive and very very proud mm -hmm. yeah so all of our parents you know they're they're very cool with it they've always kind of been you know do it, would do it every like you know they're sort of like uh they let us you know make our own decisions but they're gonna back us up 100 percent so it was was there a time you had to fight against your parents and say no that's that's my way i want to go that way and they said no you can't do that you can't only you only in our like normal social lives that sort of thing i think with this band you know this is our band um you know we basically created ourselves and so you know because this is our endeavor, we're going to be making our own decisions. They don't really have a say in anything of the sort um, in dealing with the band. Um, you know, I mean, when we're back home and stuff and just going and hanging out with friends, I'm sure they're like, you know, come home at midnight, that sort of thing. <laughs>
that sort of thing. But other than that, you know, they don't really. They can't yeah. call us in Germany. Yeah. Be home like, at midnight. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. It's a good opportunity to make party all night long. Oh yes. Rock and roll. So are they um, involved in any way in your band? Um, my dad is the manager, and he's managing us, and we just kind of decided personally just because, um, you know, a lot of times, um, with the music industry, there's a lot of people that, you know, they just want to use you and take your money and stuff, right. and it was sort of like, um, I'd rather have a manager that doesn't, you know, isn't in it for the money and doesn't want to, you know, steal half of the money or whatever, like, he doesn't do it for the money, doesn't get paid, really, so he's just kind of helping us just because, you know, I'm his daughter, and these are my friends, and, you know, he loves us all like they're, we're, you know, his children, so. And being in the music industry causes a lot of rumors, I think, so. Oh, yeah, definitely, but, I mean, a lot of the stuff that you hear, it's not true, so, I mean, you know, just kind of believe what you must, I guess, but, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times, you know, if I, it's, it's difficult to be like, you know, to everyone, try to change everyone's mind, but, I mean, you have to understand that rumors are rumors, and right. only that. And you know, a lot of the stuff that you do hear that comes through the grapevine isn't true anyways. So you hear a lot so of stuff. So I think there stuff. was a statement or a rumor caused by Mike Cox from Cold Oh, Chamber. yeah. You know, he said yeah, that... We're not um, trying to stir anything up with them, though. I mean, they have their... I've never even met them before, and they have their own ideas, I'm sure. Yeah, right. And supposedly, um, I read... I read a letter that he had wrote to someone um, that basically he was jealous. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was saying that you're not real and not pure because some, some songs are written by... By dad of well, that's not true, though. So, hmm. like, I personally don't think that there's any reason for us to get mad about it because, you know, it's not true anyways. So... It shouldn't phase us. Yeah. We know in our heart that it's yeah. not true. So, I mean, I think the whole thing with that was... So um, you're not touched by that? No, not at all. I mean, it's a little bit unnerving, but, I mean, um, I think he was just jealous. You know, they had just parted ways with uh, Sharon Osbourne, who was their manager, mm -hmm. and now we're working with Sharon Osbourne because we're on Ozfest this year. So I think yeah. he was he was kind of upset about that, and you know we're doing pretty well, I guess. You know, we basically came out of nowhere. You know, a lot of this stuff has happened really quickly for us, and we're just as surprised as anyone else. But I think uh, I had heard that you know he was just jealous, and he was pretty angry. And you know, we were doing well, and I guess well they're doing well. As yeah, well, it's good I mean, to see that you're not touched by that and yeah. don't be thrown in, in another way. Yeah, there's not way, really a point so. to get angry, I don't know. I'm sure if I meet him, you know, he'll change his mind. Yeah. <laughs> okay, coming up now your, is your request video. What is it? Um, Slayer. anything by Slayer. We're not too sure what videos they have because um, in Canada they don't play a lot of Slayer. So anything you've got by Slayer, it's good. Okay, sehen wir jetzt. Hier kommt Slayer. Hier mit Kitty in Frankfurt. Kitty yeah. werden im Sommer das Ostfestival spielen. Yeah. 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 Yes. So yeah, you understood. Ozfest. As you mentioned before. Yeah. Ozfest. We're doing the second stage. Um, we're opening it up for Soulfly. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be pretty crazy. Actually, Ministry was supposed to be on the same stage as us, but they oh, yeah. canceled. But, um, you know, it's going to be amazing. Pantera is going to be there. Um, t Incubus, Godsmack, tons and tons of bands. So it's going to be awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, what else besides that? In the summer? Um, that's it. Ozfest that's is it. pretty much all summer, and I think after that, um, that takes us to September. I think we're going to uh, go to Australia, maybe, okay. and just hit the rest of the world, and then probably come back and do some more touring in North America, and probably hit Europe again. But no chance to see you this year in Europe again? Um, maybe, maybe later on in the year, I'd say. Or perhaps. maybe early next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are already plans for a new album? Or no. No. We're just uh, taking things day by day, I think, and eventually there Hoping will... what comes around. Yeah, we'll that's see it. what happens. Okay, now coming you up live, and that's it for today. All right. Thank you very much for having me, for joining me on the show. Thank you. Jetzt kommt Kitty nochmal live, und das war's mit True Rock für heute. Und tschüss. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much.
willkommen bei T-Rock. Wir sind mal wieder ein bisschen vor die Tür gegangen und heute wunderbare Gäste, auf die ich mich sehr gefreut habe. Talina, Mercedes, Morgan und Callum from Kitty. Hey, ladies. Wow, Welcome up? to the show. Hello. Thank you. How are you? Tired. Tired. Yeah, yeah we tired. played Dynamo yesterday and oh. it was pretty much uh, one of the most amazing experiences that we've ever We've been through, so we're very tired, but we're very glad to be here. But you rocked the show there? Oh, yes, it was oh, yeah? very, very yeah. good. Circus tent. Yeah, yeah it, circus it was a small little tent. It was a second stage, but mm. there were so many people that came out to see yeah, us. So. It's amazing to play on Dynamo Festival. Oh, yeah, even oh. just to be there was, you know, history in itself. It's mm -hmm. pretty amazing. So I think the Germans um, don't know much about you, so could you just tell something about your band? Yeah, well, we can, we can start with the, uh, the whole, the whole history. story. Yeah. Um, well, we formed in 96. We started with me and Mercedes, and we had met in a gymnastics class. And we, you know, just started playing together, playing songs off the radio type thing, you know, and we just started to learn, out, learn our instruments and starting to get familiar with them. And then um, Morgan, Morgan and Mercedes, our sisters, and she just came downstairs. We were three piece. And we had written most of the songs that are on the album as a three piece. Mm -hmm. And that was all back in 1996. And, ooh, wow. eventually after that, uh, we got our, uh, um, our first bass player who actually, um, she quit in 99, in September of 1999, and that's when Talina joined the band. So right. um, in between that time and Talina joining the band, we had done a lot of local stuff. Like we played a lot of shows in small clubs and stuff around our area. And then we just happened to get signed. Really, it was pretty much the luck of the draw that we got signed. You know, we were playing this festival, and someone just happened to see us. And so here we are. Yeah, I think that happened pretty fast. Oh, it was, we it was, it was very quick. in 96, quick. and then? We, got, we were signed in, uh, I think, June of 1999. And actually, um, we recorded the album mm -hmm. before we were signed. So we were just going to do it as an indie release anyways. Mm -hmm. And then it just so happened that, you know, there was uh, an indie label from America that wanted to pick us up and do something with the band, which was really cool. So did you have to reproduce your album? Nope. No. It, we, it stayed exactly the way it was, very low budget, very um, oh. raw and aggressive, just kind of, you know, the way it was, very indie style. So. I think we should start up the show with your video for Brackish. Yeah. And then we meet again. Here sind sie erstmal mit Brackish. Ja, auch einige Bezüge. Der Produzent Garth Richardson hat ähm, Kitty produziert und damals schon L7 Größen wie die Chili Peppers und sonst wen. Und da werde ich jetzt mal ein bisschen nachhaken. So, we just had L7 on the show. And mm -hmm. I think um, L7 was produced by Garth Richardson. Yep. As you were, what was it like to work with him? Um, he was actually, he was really, really easy going. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised. At first, I think we were pretty uh, nervous because, you know, he has worked with, you know, the Melvins, yeah, yeah. L7, Red Hot Chili Peppers, all those bands. Um, so we were pretty nervous, but it just, he sort of um, just ended up being really, really nice. And he was just like, all right, now, like, he didn't really take over and he wasn't like, all right, well, this is how it's going to sound because this is the way I want things to sound. He was like, well, what do you guys want? You know, oh, how do you cool. want things way. to be produced? And so basically we kind of took the helm and was like, we just let him know what we needed. And, you know, he just kind of guided us on our way and nothing really changed at all. You know, it was not really any different than any of our other studio experiences. Have you ever been before in a studio? Yeah, we actually, we did two other demos mm -hmm. um, before, one in 1998 and one in early 99. And it was pretty much the same kind of experience. It's just that, you know, we only had nine days to record the entire album. And the album was yeah. more ordering too. Yeah, it was, we did things a lot quicker and, you know, we weren't kind of just lying back and stuff. He kind of was the person to whip us into shape and say, all right, now it's time to do this. It's time to do this. I have um, heard people say, um, Kitty are like, Kitty are to Fear Factory like the Donners are to the Ramones or they are the Muppet Baby version of oh. L7. So <laughs> what do you think when you hear that? Is that kind of compliment I or think, do you feel I think anger? it's cool. I've, I've heard, um, I've heard a, a, com a number of different things. I've heard, you know, we're the female Pantera. I've heard female Corn. I've heard tons of different things. And I think it's cool, but I mean, I think our sound is definitely um, sort of on its own in terms of like individuality. It's, it's a different sort of music. And I, I really don't like the whole comparisons to other females, just because you know, just for the sake of us being female, I think that but it's for us kind it doesn't. Of honorable. Yeah. Oh, it is definitely. I mean, um, I take all those, all the things, like all the comparisons, as compliments. But I mean, just to focus on gender alone is really not, you know, something that needs to be done. We definitely so have an album that's very like strong. 
make you sound like them or you sound no, like No, I don't them. I don't think that we, we ha we are similar to L7 um musically. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think we derive any um yeah. like I I, from them, I really. saw them in concert last year and I had never heard of them before. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Well, I've heard of them, but I've never heard their music, so I don't know. It's it's very nice though. You know, they're a very popular band. They sort of right. started the, the whole right girl kind of thing along with a lot of the other bands and that's cool, you know. They opened a lot of doors. How do you manage that? Um I mean, it's um must be pretty hard in, in, in four years come to such a success and be oh, being compared no. with S7. So what emotions? It's crazy. Definitely. It's it's really, really overwhelming to be, you know, four years ago in our basement, you know, not thinking that this was ever going to go anywhere and we were going to remain, remain a basement band forever and now we're here. Mm -hmm. Wow, Germany. So sitting in the sun. Yes. In yeah. Baking. Ah, baking in Germany. Is it the first time in Europe? Um, actually, no. We, um... It's our first time here, um, in this part of Europe, but we actually were in the UK before, and um, with Slipknot, and so this is our second time around. Okay, coming up now, next video, and then we'll meet here again. Wir gucken uns erstmal einen Clip an.